Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar, and we're going to continue with the Gospel of Matthew, Part 3. But, Chloe Ligar, before I do any teaching, what do I need to do? Pray. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for the study and the genealogy of the Lord Jesus. Father, today we get to look at Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Lord, he's also a man after your own heart. A man, Lord, that knew you like no other. He got to be like a stepdad to God incarnate. No pressure. <laughs> Father, again, the blessing that he must have enjoyed. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit now and help me to teach this topic in a way that is clear and understandable and everybody can be blessed. I pray it in the name of Jesus and everybody said... Amen. All right, so let's look at our verse. And again, please, I hope everybody can give me grace concerning some of these names. If I butcher them, I'm trying my hardest. All right, so let's begin. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathel. Sal Sal wow. And Salathel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiud, and Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Zadok. And Zadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliud, and Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Matthew 1, 12 through 7. All right, so we're going to talk real quick about stepdads. Now, some of you know my story, how my father, my real one, died when I was five months old. And then my mother remarried around the time I was five, and we moved to Las Vegas around six. Now, my stepfather, uh, he was nuts. And I had a very abusive childhood, and it was full of violence and alcoholism on his part. And then when my mom finally decided to divorce him, he decided he was going to pour gasoline all over the house and all over himself. And in his suicide note, he wrote that he wished he could kill me with him, chop off my arms, and burn me alive. Yeah. So, after that, he obviously didn't succeed because I was somewhere else. So, he torched himself. The whole house should have exploded because gasoline was everywhere. But fortunately, God watched over the house for good and only him and the chair burnt. And now he's in his own place. So, my advice to you if you are self-centered. Do not get involved with a single mother or a single father. If you are focused on your own pleasure and you go out on a date with somebody and they say to you, I have a child and they come first, your response should be, that is wonderful. I'm looking for a relationship where I can come first. So you say, excuse me, have a great day, and you book. And again, if you're self-centered, you don't want to deal 
with baby mama drama or baby daddy drama. You don't want to deal with an ex-husband or an ex-wife. And you don't want a child looking at you, depending on what age they are, saying to you, you're not my dad, you or you're not my mom. You can't tell me what to do. Because you look at them and you go, you're right. And the parent will always put their child first ahead of you. Now again, if you're self-centered, do not date a single parent. But if you got joy in your life, and you want to take that upon yourself, that's something different. And what do I mean by joy? Well, joy, J-O-Y, you put Jesus first, others second, and yourself third. And we're going to look at a man named Joseph, who, instead of joy, it's goy, because he put God first, others second, and himself third. And Joseph was an incredible man, a very good man. And it's estimated he was between the ages of 18 and 30, and he was espoused to a virgin named Mary. And Mary was somewhere between the ages of 13 and 14. Now in all our culture, we're like, oh man, that's too young. In that culture, though, you were a child from birth until around 13, and then, boom, you're an adult, and you got married, and you had kids. And Joseph was in love with Mary. She was such a godly, pure heart, and he was excited for this marriage. And then Mary comes to him, and she says, Joseph, we need to have a little talk. I'm pregnant. And the devastation that must have caused him because all he could imagine is the woman he loves in the arms of another man but again Mary was a virtuous woman who was saving herself for marriage and the father of her baby is God but you know imagine somebody tells you I'm pregnant and nobody touched me you're gonna be like a uh, yeah, okay. But again, it had to have an angel be sent to Joseph to convince him. But imagine, we're going to look at a verse in Numbers where Joseph could have put Mary through something so horrible that we can't even conceive of it. Let's have a seat and we're going to look at something that Joseph could have put Mary through and thank God that he didn't want to put her through this. In Numbers 5, verse 11, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near, and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take, 
and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causes the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse, and an oath making thee, or I'm sorry, among thy people. When the Lord does make thy thigh to rot, and thy belly to swell, and this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels and make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water, that causes the curse, and the water that causes the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before the Lord and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take an handful of the offering even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he has made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled, and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causes a curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. This is the law of jealousy, when a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband, and is defiled. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him, and he be jealous over this his wife, and shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall execute upon her all this law, then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity. Wow. Imagine the Virgin Mary going through that. It's like, wow. You know, we can't even conceive of it. And neither could Joseph. The Bible says he was a righteous man, and he did not want to put Mary through, you know, public disgrace. So he wanted to put her away quietly. And, you know, again, he was heartbroken. But an angel came to Joseph in a dream and told him, Don't worry, this is from God. This, you know, the Holy Spirit is the one who caused her to have this child. And he was to name the baby Jesus. And he became the stepfather of God incarnate. Think of that. I mean, we all have 
a different relationship with Jesus. You know, you and me were born 2,000 years later, so we never saw him in the flesh. But Joseph got to experience holding Jesus in his arms. When Jesus needed to be changed, Joseph did that. When Jesus needed to be fed, Joseph did that. And when, you know, it was time to teach Jesus how to be a carpenter, he taught him like it was his own son. But I'm sure Joseph had a desire, even though he loved Jesus, he wanted to have his own kids. And we'll see later on how God blessed him with that. But real quick, we're going to look at the only two people in the Bible to lose their salvation. Alright, so let's look in Luke. And we're going to see that the two people in the Bible to lose their salvation is Mary and Joseph. <laughs> okay, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposed him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among his kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass after three days. I'm sorry. If you're a parent and you've ever, like, you know, turned around and you can't find your child, like you're at Walmart and your child is wandered off, you're in a panic mode. And it's like, we lost our child. And you're freaked. Imagine what they are going through after three days of not, they lost their salvation. They lost Jesus. And they're like, where's our Jesus? And, you know, they finally head back. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt, thus, dealt with us? Behold, thy father... Uh, wrong. He's Mary's husband, but not his father. God is his father. But again, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that thou, that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Again, Jesus is correcting Mary here. You know, Jesus loved Joseph. And he respected him as an authority, you know, the father figure. But Jesus knew his father is God. And, uh, you know, she ha he had to, you know, kind of get that out there to them. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. That is in Luke 2, 41 through 52. Now again, I make a joke that the only two people in the Bible to lose their salvation is Mary and Joseph. That's a joke. They lost Jesus, but they found him, and Jesus is our salvation. So that's the joke I was getting at there. So again, 
Joseph is given a privilege to raise the Son of God, but I'm sure in his heart he wished he could have his own. And there's a particular religion out there that wants to say that Mary was a virgin her whole life. But the scriptures say that is nonsense because they had a normal, healthy marriage and they had lots of kids. So here in Matthew 13, 55, it says, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph, and Simon and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? So Jesus had lots of stepbrothers and even a few sisters. So again, God gave Joseph the desire of his heart to have his own kids. Again, because Joseph was a man of goy, he put God first, he put others second, and he put himself last. God was able to see the desire of his heart and he blessed Joseph like he did Hannah when she prayed to God, God, give me a man child and I will dedicate him to you. So God answered Hannah's prayer and gave her Samuel. And Hannah kept her word and she brought her son Samuel to Eli the priest and she let them raise Samuel in the temple or in the tent that they were worshiping in those days. And then God allowed Hannah to have a whole bunch of kids more than Samuel. So again, the Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. So we want to honor Joseph, the husband of Mary. He's a great role model for people that even though it wasn't his child, he was willing to take on the responsibility and raise Jesus as his own. And again, imagine Joseph being in heaven, remembering the time when Jesus was a little baby in his arms, and he would feed him, he would change him, he, he saw him grow up, and now he sees Jesus sitting on the right hand of God upon the throne, and he's worshiping his son as God incarnate. Wow. <laughs> so again, this is part three in the Gospel of Matthew. And we're finally finished with the genealogy. So I don't have to try to say these names, which I can't pronounce. But I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope you'll join us next time. This is JC Ligar with Chloe Ligar. God bless you all, one and all. Bye-bye.